Hello everyone and welcome to another Pyro Gaming video. So let's talk about sunsetting in Destiny 2. If you're not familiar, sunsetting is a new concept that Bungie's coming up with uh, that will start taking effect in Season 12, which is going to be the fall expansion that we get later this year. And basically what it is is starting in Season 12, uh, once a weapon is sunsetted, it will no longer be able to be up, brought up to the max power level of that season that it is sunsetted in. Now, a lot of people are confused about this. I, I, I've been getting a lot of replies on Twitter, a lot of people adding me on Twitter asking me to explain it, so here's a short video hopefully explaining it to you. So first of all, sunsetting does not mean that weapons are going away, okay? So in Season 12, which is again that fall expansion, every weapon and armor piece from Seasons 1 through 8, that is Destiny 2's launch all the way through Shadowkeep, all right, all the way through Shadowkeep, and that does include Shadowkeep weapons, okay? If you got a weapon in Shadowkeep, it will be sunsetted in Season 12, okay? So, what does it mean to be sunsetted? Well, like I said, it does, it just means that as of right now, for example, I'm 1010 on this Love and Death. This is the current highest power level in the game, okay? Next season, the power level is going to go up again. I'll be able to infuse this up to that new power level. Season 12, I won't be able to infuse this up anymore. So next season is gonna be the last season that I can infuse this to the max power level. It's not going anywhere. I can still use it. I just won't be able to use it in like the new raid in season 12, depending on how high the power level is. Remember, you can equip something that is a lower power level than max and still be a pretty high power level. All right, these weapons are gonna still be in your vault. They're still gonna be usable. And what's more important, and I think a lot of people are failing to realize this, and I think that this is what's causing a lot of the confusion, they're not going to raise the power level of every activity in the game. At least they haven't announced that just yet. So, this love and death, everything that I use it in currently, I will still be able to use it in in Season 12, because those activities that are in the game now are seemingly going to be unchanged in terms of their power level. Okay? I hope this is making sense. So the way that it works, all right, I'm going to use Recluse as an example. Recluse came out in March of 2018. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Scratch that. March of 2019, okay? Season of the Drifter is when Recluse came out. I believe that that was season... Let's see. Shadowkeep would have been eight. Seven, seven. Season six. I'm, I'm really bad with numbers. Recluse came out in season six. Season of the Drifter, Okay. So Recluse, if Sunsetting was in the game now, would have been usable and infusable up to the max power level for the following three seasons after Season of the Drifter. So it came out in Season 6. In Season 7, which was Season of the Opulence, it would have been infusable. In Season 8, which was Shadowkeep, it would have been infusable. And in Season 9, which was Season of the Dawn, it would have been infusable. So in Season 10, which is the current season, this weapon would have been sunsetted and it would be setting at 970 right now as opposed to 1010 because 970 was the highest power level that you can infuse stuff up to last season and that was Recluse's last season to be infused up to the higher power level. So again, I can still use it. I can use it right now even if it was 970. It wouldn't be that big of a deal. It wouldn't drop my power level all that much, but it just wouldn't be 1010. I hope that makes sense to you guys, okay? So, that being said, let's talk about the things that will be dropped from max power infusion in Season 12. Literally everything from Shadowkeep and before. So that includes Season of Opulence, that includes Shadowkeep, Season of the Drifter, Forsaken, uh, Black Armory. That also includes... That's it. <laughs> no, that also includes all the all the year one stuff too, okay? So when season 12 starts, the weapons that you will be able to use are weapons and armor from Season of the Dawn, Season of the Worthy, and Season of whatever the hell is coming next season. I don't know what next season's name is. Okay, so that's how weapons are going to work. So, for example, this Seventh Seraph, okay, this came out in season 10 so i will be able to infuse this up until season 13 so that's the season after the big fall expansion so 
Uh, I will be able to infuse this up to max power all the way through December of next year. And in March of next year, whenever that new season starts for the March of next year season, that will be the last one that I can infuse this all the way up. Okay, so it's three before, three after is basically what you're looking at. Now for armor, for armor, they are also sunsetting armor. It is gonna work the exact same way. I'm personally not too torn up about the armor. All right, because you're gonna have to get new armor sets anyway in season 12 to have the new mods, even if you kept the current mod system. Okay, so you're gonna have to do that anyway. So chances are I'm gonna replace these sets regardless of, you know, whatever. Now, another thing that people are mad about is, well, you know, I grinded all these rolls and all this other stuff. You know, why, why are you gonna take it from me? Okay, if they keep going like they have been, the season pass is giving you some of the best armor in the game every season in terms of stat rolls. So that shouldn't be an option. If your concern is the look of the armor, if you really like this look and you don't want to lose that look, well, in season 12, they're also going to introduce transmogrification. If you do not know what transmogrification means, it means that I can take this armor set right here, this look, and I can convert it to a universal ornament like these right here. There's not a lot of info available on how transmogrification is going to work in Destiny 2. So far, all they've said is there's going to be a way to be able to do it in-game, and there's going to be a way to do it for silver at the Eververse store. But, what this means is, let's say that I really like this look. This came out in Warmind, okay? And they just updated it recently to be able to include seasonal mods. So, I don't know exactly how this is going to work. I'm assuming that this is going to be able to take all of year three's mods because that was when it got the mod slot so what they're kind of doing is instead of you know the season before the season after kind of thing with the mod slots it's just going to be the mods for that year so for four seasons basically when season 12 armor drops it'll be able to take all the mods for that season as well as season 13 14 and 15. that's how i understand it i'm not a hundred percent sure on that but i think that that's how it's going to work and then you know, for example, like this Cloak of the Great Hunt, which comes from the raid, uh, Last Wish, I should be able to put Taken Armaments, Fallen Armaments, and Hive Armaments on this starting in Season 12, because that is what came in its calendar year. So that would be Season 4, 5, 6, and 7, because that was Forsaken, and then uh, Black Armory, Season of the Drifter, and Season of Opulence. I'm assuming that's how it's going to work. Yeah, being able to break down any armor piece and turning in, turn it into an ornament, honestly, it's going to open up so many different possibilities for so many people because I really like, like, for example, like this, this armor that I'm wearing. I really like the way that it looks, but the stat rolls on this are pure garbage. If I can use this look on this Righteous set, holy crap, man, I would love that because this Righteous set has insane stats. Quickly, I want to jump back to something for the weapons because I, I forgot to mention it. So they did say that weapons and armor from Last Wish and Garden of Salvation specifically will not follow the exact same time frame rules as other weapons and armor in the game. They didn't go into details, but the fact that Last Wish is a season eight raid, no, Last Wish is a season four raid. This came out in season four. The fact that they mentioned Last Wish leads me to believe that it's gonna be a pretty long lifespan for those two raids gear because why would you mention it if it wasn't going to be sunsetted in season 12? That is an eight season gap, not a three season gap. You know what I'm saying? So it's gotta be a pretty significant lifespan for the raid stuff, specifically Last Wish and Garden of Salvation and presumably the newest raid coming out this September. So just wanted to point that out. But uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the gist of it, man. Um, your stuff's not going anywhere. Your stuff will still be usable. Uh, one other thing that I would like to throw out there is assuming you're still going to be able to use your artifact like we do now, how you get the power bonus. I mean, you're going to be able to equip some stuff that lowers your power level quite a bit and still be up there if you have enough on your artifact. So it's not the end of the world, man. Uh, it's, it's really not. Me personally, I am in favor of sunsetting weapons and armor. Um, armor, I don't really have an opinion about honestly i don't i don't care that they're sunsetting armor it's whatever as long as i can convert these to ornaments i'm happy i can put it on whatever gear set whatever stats i want that's fine i'm happy with that 
But for weapons, dude, I am so tired of Mountaintop Recluse in PvE. Just, that's all anybody wants to use. I'm so tired of it. And not only that, but if you retiring quote-unquote Recluse in the end game means that you can make a new weapon that is just as good as Recluse, dude, I'm all for that. Like, if we had a hand cannon as a pinnacle weapon that was on the same tier as Recluse, dude, I'm all for it. If we had an auto rifle that was on the same tier as Recluse, I'm all for it. If we had a shotgun that was on the same tier as Mountaintop, I'm all for it. But you get into power creep if you just throw all that stuff in the game. And that's something that we've already experienced in Destiny 2. We were too strong, and as a result, Heroic Menagerie was just not even fun because it was power creep in its truest form. We were too strong, and the activity had to be ridiculous in order to compensate for what we were able to do. So I'm not a fan of power creep, and if you just throw all the, keep throwing all this stuff in the game like it is right now, that's what you're going to get. Uh, as far as PvP, it's only going to really make a difference in things like Iron Banner and Trials of Osiris, where power level is enabled. But again, man, like... It's not, it's not that big of a difference, you know, to have something that is below power level. If you're just doing it doing it in one slot, it's not that big of a deal. And you got to keep in mind, man, we're going to get some better weapons. We're going to. There's no way that sunsetting will be effective and will work if we don't get new gear. And Bungie has to know that. Speaking of which, I don't have it on me, but I was sitting there thinking today, the only sword, unless they introduce a new sword next season... The only sword that we're going to be able to take into Season 12 and infuse all the way up is going to be the new New Monarchy sword, because all the other ones are so old that they're going to be sunsetted, including the Shadowkeep sword. Night Terror was Season 8. Season 1 through 8 will be sunsetted. But the last thing that I am going to leave you guys with is this right here. So you know the quest for Felwinter's Lie. If you've looked at what Felwinter's Lie looks like, it is completely stacked top to bottom. It looks like it's going to be an insane shotgun. I believe that going forward, under this new sunsetting umbrella, those are the kinds of weapons that we're going to be getting, as opposed to just these throwaways that are, okay, cool, new sidearm, awesome, dismantle, get shards. You're actually going to want to keep Felwinter's Lie, and I think that that's what they're doing, because they know that coming up in... September, in Season 12, things like Fell Winters are finally going to be out of Trials of Osiris. They're finally going to be out of Iron Banner. So they're putting Fell Winters Lie in and making it super strong to compensate for that removal. I'm assuming. That's what I feel like. And that's what I feel like it's going to be like going forward. And that's why I am in favor of it. Drop a comment in the box below. Let me know if you have any questions. I will try my best to answer them. If you enjoyed this video, click like. If you're new to the channel, click subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, I fucking love you. Thank you guys so much for watching and take care.